Are home prices dropping? That's a great question. And with the volatility of the market, it's not an easy answer. Today, we're going to be looking at home prices. And if you're thinking of selling your home, I'm going to give you five things that you can do to make sure you maximize your sale price. If you watch till the end of the video, I'm going to have a cautionary tale of what you shouldn't do if you don't want to waste a lot of time and lose a lot of money. This is Monday Mornings with Mark. Hi, I'm your host, Mark J. Schmidt of Remax Country and MoveMeMark.com, where I help you get the most out of the real estate market and your home. If you're new here and you like what you see, do me a favor, hit the like button, be sure to subscribe, and hit that bell so you don't miss out. I was recently interviewed for an article on the state of the housing market, and I thought it would be a good idea to talk about what prices are doing so that you can make the best decisions for yourself. So I've got some data here. You know, we can't do anything without data. It's the most important thing we've got, especially when figuring out how to price your home. So I've got here uh, the local market update for July 2022 from New Jersey Realtors. Now, uh, July is the last month that we have numbers for. Uh, they're on a bit of a time delay in order for them to get all the, the figures in that they need to tabulate. So let's take a look at what was happening in the market in July. So first of all, let's look at the year-to-date numbers. So these numbers are specific to Middlesex County. I can get numbers if you have questions. I can get numbers for any of the counties in the state. I can get you the entire state of New Jersey, but we're going to talk about Middlesex County right now. So looking at the numbers, year to date, from the beginning of January to the end of July, new listings on the market in Middlesex County were down 9.5%. Okay. Closed sales in Middlesex County year to date were down 12.7%. And uh, what's interesting, the median sales price so this is where it gets really interesting. Remember, we had fewer new listings. We had even fewer sales than the previous year. But when it comes to the median sale price, now remember, median sale price is when you take all the sale prices and you line them up in a row, going from lowest to highest. And the one that's in the middle, that's going to be the median sale price. Well, the median sale price rose 10.5% year over year from $430,000 to $475,000. That's significant. But you have to remember in the beginning of the year, the market was a lot different than it is now. The market was super, super hot. We're still hot, but it was super, super hot in the beginning of the year. Let's take a look at July itself. So those are the year to date numbers. Let's take a look at the numbers for July itself. In July, new listings were down. 8.5%. Now remember, year to date, they were down 9.5%. So 8.5% down in July for new listings. Closed sales were down 10.9% over the previous time period. And what's interesting is that the median sales price, now remember, from the beginning of the year, year to date, the median sales price was up 10.5%. And if we look at just July, it was only up 4.6%. So reading that, you can kind of infer that the uh, home prices were up a lot more in the beginning of the year, and now they're starting to back off a bit. Now, does that mean that home prices are slipping? Not really. I mean, look at this. They're still up 4.6%. You know, going from uh, 2021, the uh, median sales price in July was 469500 and now in uh, July 2022, $491,000. So we're still very active. We're still, I mean, obviously, we still have a lot of demand out there. And that's why these numbers, even though we have fewer listings and fewer sales, we still have the buyers out there. So yeah, maybe we're not seeing the crazy appreciation that we were seeing before but we are still seeing some appreciation. So if you're thinking about selling your home, you really want to maximize your sale price while the going is good. Listen, the market is still hot and before it cools off, you want to be able to get as much as you can for your home. So I've got five things I want to share with you that are going to help you do just that. Now, number one is you have to be realistic about your sales price. You know, um, 
a lot of people will put their homes on the market and they'll look at their neighbors down the street and they'll say, oh, well, the neighbors down the street, they listed their home for $450. That means our home is worth $550. It doesn't exactly work that way. Sometimes we tend to have a bias uh, when we're thinking about selling our own homes and we say, gee, you know what? Our home is fantastic because you love your home and you should love your home. But loving your home doesn't always equate to more money. So what you need to do is, which leads me to number two, you need to analyze recent comparable sales. Now, typically, in a normal market, a real estate agent may go back, you know, six months to look at homes that had sold and kind of see where your home should be priced. You know, they want to look at the comparable sales, homes that are similar to yours that have sold in the vicinity, either in your neighborhood or in your town, and uh, kind of get an idea of where prices are going. Well, with the volatility of this market, you really can't go back six months anymore. You really want to go back maybe a month or two. Any further than that really is if you don't find anything. Now, compare your home to the homes that recently sold. Does your home have a similar square footage? Is it in similar condition? Does it have similar amenities? If it doesn't, you're going to have to adjust the value of your home. So for example, if you see a home that closed uh, near your home that had a finished basement and your home doesn't have a finished basement, you're going to have to make an adjustment down in your value because you don't have a finished basement. Now on the flip side, let's say that a home down the street from you sold and it doesn't have a finished basement, and you do have a finished basement, well now your value can go higher because now you have an amenity that they didn't have. So make sure you go over and really analyze your home compared to these other homes. Number three is a super important one. You need to look at your home in the eyes of a buyer. Forget you live there. If you walked into your home for the first time, having never seen it before, what would you think? Would you be impressed? Or are there things in your home that you can fix up? What would you fix up if you were a buyer coming into your home? Now, listen, there may be things that you're not gonna wanna fix up, like you're not going to want to renovate your kitchen or maybe renovate a bathroom. But there are things you can do, including maybe throwing some new paint on the walls, fixing up some of the flooring, maybe replacing some of the light fixtures. These are all inexpensive things that you can do that are not gonna cost you a lot, but are gonna give you a huge bang for your buck. So look at your home in the eyes of a buyer. Number four, understand that buyers buy homes based on value. They're going to look at your home and they're comparing it to every other home that they've already seen and every other home that they've seen online. Let's face it, people are, you know, when they're out looking to buy a home, they're looking online at homes every single day. So they have a good idea of what's out there. And if they don't think your home is a good value, they're gonna walk away. Buyers based on value. And as I like to tell my clients, Buyers don't put offers on the highest priced homes, they put offers on the best priced homes. So you wanna make sure that the buyers, when they come in, they're going to see the value immediately. And this leads us to number five, price your home within the comps. Like I said, buyers buy homes based on value. Now, sometimes you'll have a, a homeowner who will say, gee, you know what? I wanna list my home on the high side and it's going to give me room to negotiate. But you wanna show the value in your home and you wanna get those buyers excited to put an offer on your home. And you know what the only thing that's better than getting a buyer to put an offer on your home? It's getting multiple buyers to put offers on your home because that's when they bid the price of your home up. If they see the value and if multiple people see the value, they will not want to miss out on buying your home. Having multiple offers not only gives you a greater chance of having your price go higher, but it also gives you options. You're going to be able to choose a buyer who's got the best type of financing, more money down, someone who's going to be able to give you your closing date and, and not give you any hassles. They're not gonna nickel and dime you over home inspection items. Having those options can make, you know, what can be a difficult process for some, absolutely fantastic. So make sure you price your home correctly to get those buyers excited. Now I told you earlier that I had a cautionary tale for you. I saw a home that was listed for sale and even in this incredibly hot market we've had, they did not do too well. So this home hit the market and they hit the market originally 
at $625,000. Now, this home probably should have been somewhere in the maybe 515 to 520 range, but they came on the market at $625,000. They then did what is known as chasing the market. So you're chasing the market when your price is a little bit too high and it should be lower and the market is below your price, but you never get low enough for your home to have value in the eyes of those buyers. So remember, they said, I told you they started at 625,000. They then dropped their price to 598. Then they dropped their price to 539. Then they dropped their price to 489 before they finally accepted an offer from a buyer. Remember, they started at 625,000. They ended at 489,000. Now, I don't know what they actually closed at. I don't know what they actually sold their home for, but to go from 625 all the way down to 489, that's a huge jump. Remember, I said that the home should probably have been about maybe 515 to 520, but they were also on the market for 140 days before they accepted this offer. That's a long time to be on the market, and especially in a hot market like this, a buyer will look at that and they'll say, what is wrong with this home that it's been on the market for 140 days? That's way too long. Uh, they probably shouldn't have been so ambitious right out of the gate, but that's not what you want to do. If you make sure you price your home according to the comps, and like I said, look at your home in the eyes of a buyer, you're going to have no problem, you're not going to lose any money, and you're not going to lose all that time. Now listen, if you have questions about selling your home, about buying a home, or about any part of the real estate process, there's a fantastic resource. It's my website. You can find me at www.movememark.com. Thanks so much for watching. If you missed our last episode, I've got it right here for you. And here's another episode that YouTube thinks you should watch. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that circle and subscribe so you don't miss out. And I'll see you next time for more Monday Mornings with Mark. You have a great week.